title of my sermon today is, Where is the Church When the Brook Runs Dry? Where is the church when the life-giving brook runs dry? I want to introduce you to three people. Victoria. Victoria is a part of the Yakama Indian Nation. Victoria is pregnant for the first time and she's anxious like a lot of new pregnant mothers are and whoever else is around, family. And during her pregnancy, all of a sudden, the maternity unit that was treating her closed down. This is out in Washington, a hospital out in Washington that serves uh, the Yakama Indian Nation. It's a rural area, impoverished area, and now Victoria has to find out where she's now going to go to give birth. She's, she's got to find a new doctor now, so she's dealing with all this anxiety. She and 35 other mothers who are now mothers-to-be who are now left in the dark. And then we have Jasmine. Jasmine is a high-risk pregnancy. She's already had one procedure done to help her. She's also a part of the Yakama Indian Nation. And she too was left in the dark when this hospital's unit for maternity care closed down. Now she has to figure out where she's gonna give birth and she also has to find a new doctor. And this is happening all across the nation especially in poor communities, low-income communities, because in low-income communities, childbirth is not profitable. So a lot of these units are being shut down. The brook is running dry. Then we have Maria, who is from Guatemala. When she was a girl, she's now 13, when she was a, a younger girl, maybe five, six years old, her mother had been saving and saving and saving in the U.S. She was able to save enough to have Maria brought back to her home in the U.S. It cost a few thousand dollars for that to happen. Now, there are different accounts to what happened later, but Maria was caught along with, not caught, that, that implicates her. The company that she works for was caught and charged with allowing underage children to work for their company. Maria was one of many who worked for a cleaning company that was cleaning meat cutting industry plant type stuff. Have you heard about this story? Yes. And now her mom and dad may be deported back to Guatemala. She's 13. The Labor Department who looked into all of this, they neglected to get names of the children so that the children could be then helped by other organizations. They neglected to, to stay in contact with a lot of these children and now they can't find most of them or half of them. The children have moved or gone to other places. The U.S. Labor Department had their own motivation for doing all of this. The brook is running dry. Reminds me of our widow woman this morning in the story. The brook has actually run dry. They're in a famine. And when we encounter this woman in the story, she's gathering sticks. Why? Because she's going to make her last meal with her son. She's been raising a son by herself. No help from anyone. No, no men, no safety net, no financial support from anywhere. She's done it all alone. Now Elijah raised the dead, Herschel. But I think it's harder to raise a son by yourself than to raise the dead. 
We find her gathering sticks to start a fire to have her last meal with her son before they die. This is a woman who has endured so much. You can imagine the strength, the endurance, the faith, the perseverance, and the hope that she had. It's interesting, the Bible doesn't even give her a name. She doesn't have a name. Let's name her today. What's her name? Let's call her Beloved. Elijah encounters Beloved and reassures her that God will provide. And she has enough hope and faith and trust to believe the promise. Even though the brook has run dry, God will still provide. I wonder how many Victorias, Jasmines, Marias, and Beloveds are in the Richmond area. What do you think, Rich? For so many people in our city, in our area, in our neighborhoods, the brook has run dry. Where is the church when the brook runs dry? Are we close? Are we close to the Victorias, the Jasmines, the Marias, the Beloved's church? Are we close? Can we hear them? Do we know their pain? Do we know their struggle? Where is the church when the brook runs dry? dry. We're reading a, a great book entitled Breathing Space, A Spiritual Journey in the South Bronx for our Faith Formation Class. And there's so many heartbreaking and hope-filled stories in this book. It's written by a pastor, Pastor Heidi Newark, who served in the South Bronx for about 20 years in a church that was dying in a neighborhood that is dying. But there's hope, there's love, and there's courage. And I want to introduce you to Bernice. She writes about Bernice. Bernice grew up in an abusive home. Her dad physically abused her, emotionally abused her. When she was in high school, she had her first child, and so she dropped out of school to raise him. And then she went into other relationships where, just like her father, she was abused emotionally and physically. And to soothe her pain, she picked up alcohol and crack cocaine. The brook was running dry. And it got to a place, Jeff, where she was ready to give up. She was ready to, to end it all. She had heard that this church, Church of Transformation in the South Bronx, was giving, out, was giving out Christmas gifts to all the families that had need. And so she was going to go to the church and get these Christmas gifts, go and sell them, and buy enough drugs to overdose on purpose, intentionally. She was going to end it all. She was sick and tired of being sick and tired, and she was ready to end it. So when she got to the church and she was waiting to get her gifts, another one of the church members saw her, Janet, we'll call her Janet. Janet saw Bernice, saw Bernice's pain, saw her eyes, knew that something wasn't right. So she rushed over, took Bernice aside, and they started talking. They embraced, they cried together, they hugged. Bernice was able to share her pain, her struggle, And because of that experience, she decided to not just receive the Christmas gifts, but she decided to return to church on Sunday. And so she returned to the church on Sunday, and she returned for Bible study, for women's groups, and she detoxed on the church floor, on the carpet throughout the week.
Now life didn't just change for her. Life was still hard. She was dealing with other relationships that were toxic and abusive, but she stayed strong like our like beloved. She had hope, she had perseverance, she had strength. And she kept going. And then the church employed her to reach out to other women in the neighborhood that were suffering. And so she was reaching out to other women who had gone through the same thing that she had gone through, helping them, giving them whatever resources that they needed. And then the church hired her part time to reach out to folks who had HIV and AIDS. And it was just a tremendous turnaround in her life and a powerful witness to the grace of God. As Bernice said, I went from crackhead to eventually church council president. She had your, je- your job, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Transformation, transfiguration. The brook had run dry. Thank God the church was there. Amen. This last image that we have of Bernice. In the, in the book is at communion. She's standing, holding the bread over her head, breaking the bread and serving all in need of the bread of life. Where is the church? Where is the church when the brook runs dry? And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Church family, look around at one another. Share the love of God with one another. Recognize the presence of Christ. Recognize the dignity and worth. Namaste. Each and every one of us. We're the church. Amen. Amen. We are called to love and care for one another. Amen. Care for one another, support one another, pray for one another, hold one another. Sometimes we need to hold each other physically. Amen. Amen. And like our brother John Lewis said, sometimes we got to get into some good trouble. As we've talked about in faith formation class, if there's not some little bit of fear and a little bit of anxiety in the church about what we're doing, we might not be doing the right thing. Amen? Y'all know what I mean by that? We always got to be moving a little bit further, taking more risk, joining Jesus as Jesus stands in solidarity with the oppressed in our world. So church, receive this blessing. As you leave this place, May God bless you with seeking. Seek out the hungry. Seek out the weary. Seek the good in every person you pass. Try hard on that one. Seek out the hopeful. Seek out the faithful. Seek God in each of us. Amen. And as you seek and as you wonder, may you find what you are looking for in the name of our loving God who is always seeking us. God is seeking you right now. Go now in peace. Amen.